Lauren, as a Castor athlete, you've had an amazing response from the Rangers support since the club announced their own partnership with Castor. How have you found that? Yeah, it's been incredible, to be honest. I mean, it's completely overwhelming. The support's been been crazy. I think initially, obviously, I just got involved as a as a Castor athlete and wanted to promote the the deal for them and share the the buzz with everyone between Rangers and Castor. But then I just have been, seemed to have been completely adopted by the Rangers family, and it's just been incredible. The support has been overwhelming, and I feel fully invested in the club. And I mean. Previously, I had interest in Rangers and, fo and followed their progress, but I, I'm really excited for obviously life to get back to normal when we're when we're able to to go to the games and everything like that. Because yeah, you know, I'm excited to to share the journey. Really, can you tell us about your own journey to becoming a professional wheelchair tennis player? Yeah, so obviously it's been um, a, a bumpy road. Really, um, initially I, I had a sporting background, but in football, and that's actually my first love. I uh, used to play football for Brighton, which is my local team where, where my family live. And when just before my accident, I was actually having trials with Chelsea and in conversations with them. So it was really starting to look up and I was fully confident that I would end up playing for England. And yeah, it, that was my my drive and what, where I saw my, my future. And then I was 13 at the time and... I was meant to actually be cleaning my best friend's boat, but obviously at 13 years old, cleaning is not something you really want to be doing, nor any chores. Uh, so me and my best mate just snuck off to play some football and just being active kids, we just started climbing the trees around the, the marina. Um, and it was actually, it was a tree that was overhanging a slight cliff edge. And I went to stand up on the branch and lean on a branch and the branch that I was leaning on snapped. So I fell forward and I actually ended up falling around 25 foot in total so it was it was quite a fall and on my my way down I landed on my stomach on quite a, a large branch and my spine literally just just came out it was quite a brutal a brutal fall and, and a bad injury um, I was taken to the local hospital and told that I was too severe for them so then went was air ambulance to Southampton General Hospital and had two major surgeries uh, one which was pretty gruesome which when I normally talk to to kids in schools it's that one that they want to hear all the gory details about um, but yeah I managed to obviously get through those surgeries and come out come out the other side and then I I think I went through it was about six or seven months of rehab in St Mandeville Hospital where I learned to do just simple things that you wouldn't think you would ever have to learn how to do again like obviously I had to learn how to use my arms again and sit up and and get dressed for myself and then when I when I nailed that it was for me all focused on being active again so I had a bit of a reputation for being an absolute nightmare for the nurses because I was constantly falling out my chair trying to race around the hospital and and go in the gym with the big muscly guys and just get competitive with everyone but in doing so just got a bit of a reputation in, in hospital for being active and sporty and it was there that my my journey as a Paralympian or future Paralympian really began because it was then that I discovered I could actually still be involved in sport and even professional sport. So then after leaving hospital, I, I took up wheelchair tennis and within the first two years, I actually made it to number one in the world for the junior girls and won girl gold at the world championships with Alfie Hewitt, who was my teammate. And that was really where I think I started to believe that actually I, I can be successful at this. And I think I knew at the beginning because one of the reasons I chose wheelchair tennis was because it was so challenging and, and so difficult and so professional. And I think it was quite a, I mean, two years is relatively fast, but I definitely had to work really hard and, and become professional in myself, even at a young age to be able to achieve that. So I think when I achieved world number one, I was like, right, I'm, I'm ready for this. And now obviously at 24, I compete in the seniors and, I'm in training for my first Grand Slam and hopefully Wimbledon is the one I'd like to compete in first and my first Paralympics, which obviously was meant to be Tokyo 2020 and now we're looking at Tokyo 2021 potentially. So that, that's the plan. Do you find competing as a, a single athlete a challenge in itself because team sports provide that natural camaraderie? Is it a challenge to train and compete as an individual? Yeah, definitely. And I think for me, I... 
I li- I kicked a ball around since I could walk and that was how I was brought up. My dad was a good footballer himself. And I think for me, because that was how I grew up, I learned how to be a good team player. And I actually liked to lead. I was the captain for my teams um, throughout different age groups. And I did really enjoy that. But I think I enjoyed being the individual in football because I could help the team. And then obviously I was thrown into a, an individual sport and I have struggled. And even recently I've struggled thinking, can I actually... Have I, am I made to be an individual athlete? Because I know I'm a team player, but actually working with my personal team and working to achieve for them as much as I do myself means that I can still actually create a team around me. So it's definitely different, but I'm finding a way to, to make it work. And I think that's a, another link here where actually I think I really connected with the support from the Rangers fans because it was a way to actually bring that team atmosphere and and everything into my current career so I kind of feel like I'm a footballer again but in a weird way (laughs) so now I'm getting the best of both. You've mentioned on social media that you've got connections to Rangers can you tell us a bit about them? Yes, so my uh, my dad was actually born in Reading, so we were brought up as Reading fans, which is a uh, pretty traumatic in itself, to be fair. Um, but when when we supported the team, we used to go to the matches. It was Graham Murty who was the captain, and he's complete legend at the club, and obviously he got us to to the Premier League. And when I had my accident, um, Graham got in touch with my family and wanted to meet me and just support me because obviously I was a 13 year old who had all of these hopes and dreams of being a professional footballer and he knew I was a Reading fan and he just wanted to help so he got in touch and he actually nearly set fire to Southampton Hospital when he came because he bought me a birthday cake and <laughs> lit the candles and I had all, all the gas um, that around my bed and so the nurses just he caused absolute havoc but yeah we've been been great friends ever since and that's now getting on 11 years and obviously he he moved to Rangers and was the caretaker manager there. So I've been following Rangers progress and and actually we we planned before the coronavirus and all the lockdown hit, we had planned to get up to the club and, and get to the training ground and hopefully talk to to everyone there. So yeah, I, I had connections beforehand and then when I learned of the cast audio, I was just really excited to to bring it all together really and it's it's come together perfectly. You've touched on this already, um, but lockdown is obviously present, preventing competitive tennis this summer. How hard has that been given the tournaments that you've been missing out on? Yeah, it's been an interesting period. I mean, I was fully focused on trying to qualify for Tokyo 2020, which for me was was challenging in itself because I'm actually currently returning from, from a major surgery that I had last year. Um, so I'm not complaining too much about the extra bit of time because it gives me slightly longer, but at the same time, at the moment, we have no idea when we're going to be able to get back competing. And I know a lot of people have been able to work from home quite effectively, but obviously I am a tennis player and I do not have a tennis court at home. Uh, so it's just been physical training really. But the nice thing is that I have been able to focus on, on the other part of my career. And that is to work closely with my with my sponsors uh, like Castor and also get involved with sharing my story and I think with someone who's experienced what I have I feel like I have an amazing opportunity to to share my story and show people what you are capable of no matter what you go through so I think it's given me an opportunity to still be able to achieve but tennis wise um, yeah I, I need to get back on court as soon as possible. Can you give us a, an insight as a partner how Castor have been for you? They've been incredible. I mean, initially when, when I met with the Castor guys, it, were, it was just, we, everything just clicked into place because I think Castor, obviously, you guys will know from your previous interviews with them and from the story, it's very much an ethos of better never stops. And I think they thought that my story just fits with that perfectly. And the fact that I'm still striving to achieve more, I think we just, I really... I really think that there's just strong correlations between the two and to work with a brand who, I mean, Tom and Phil themselves, they're very just down to earth, normal people, but actually they're achieving incredible things with, with an incredible brand, but they're just football fans themselves and normal people. And I think they were inspired by me and my journey and yeah, it's a great team of people and, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of, of everything that's going on and their support has been incredible. And I think, 
we complement each other well and can achieve a lot together and now we've got Rangers in the team as well. That's a it's a dream team. <laughs> yeah, and what can Rangers and the Rangers supporters expect from Castor as a partner? I think, uh, like I like I just said, the the guys are football fans themselves, and I think they aren't this massive. I mean, they're an incredible brand, but they're not an untouchable brand. They're happy to engage with everyone, and I think they want to really communicate with people and give the fans what they want and give the club what they want and I mean I know for me that if there's been a specific product that I like or need adapting then they find a way to do it and I think it will be the same for Rangers and they'll work closely with the team and yeah I, I think they can expect a, a really successful partnership and it's a really unique opportunity that also to the roots obviously they're British and they're football fans and they're on a journey where for them it's just the beginning and I feel like in a way there's a lot of correlations there with with Rangers themselves um and I also know that in terms of ex what they're what they're wanting to bring to the fans obviously there's the a, a massive launch of of the mega store I know that there's a big refurbishment and everything going on which the fans are really excited about and also a lot of the questions that I've been receiving there's been uh, a lot of actually women getting in touch asking if there's going to be a women's kit and I know that previously the, the women just had to wear a small men's top, but actually that's a prime example of how Castor want to work with the fans. And they, they have confirmed that they will be bringing out a women's shirt. So it's things like that, that they want everyone to be involved and everyone to be valued. And I think it will be an amazing partnership. Tell us maybe a bit about the, the quality of the kit that Castor have provided you with over the last period that you've had them. Yeah, it is. Um, it's another level, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously, style-wise, it's smart, but it's the main thing is is the quality. I know that. Well, Andy Murray, he's he's the, the best tennis player you can think of, and he went to Castor. It's not like Castor had to had to beg him. He went to them because of the quality of the kit, and I think there's just that that says it all. Um, it's yeah, you'll all see for yourselves when when you get the kit and when when you get involved with with the hoodies and everything. I mean, one of their main products is just ridiculous. I can have my arm under a tap and it doesn't even get my arm wet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ridiculous stuff and it just provides athletes with, with the best opportunity to be the best they can be. And I think that's exactly what, what Rangers want as a team and the fans themselves. And just to end, do you have a, a message for the Rangers supporters? I think um, I'm just really excited to to be a part of this journey. And I think from my side, I feel like Rangers obviously are, are an extremely historic club with an amazing journey ahead of them. And obviously it's a, it's a new era and that's what everyone's saying in terms of the deal with Castor and moving forward, what everyone can achieve. And I'm excited to be a part of that. But the flip side is obviously the support that I've received from, from everyone towards my own personal journey has been incredible. And I think I'd just, I'd love to share that journey like I said earlier and bring that football side of me back and have this as kind of creating a team atmosphere around my career and I think the support I've had has been incredible and I'll definitely keep everyone up to date through my social media platforms and try to get uh everyone saying that they want me to bring a Wimbledon trophy to mm -hmm. to Ibrox but I mean I've got to win one first but I definitely will be if I if I win that. <laughs>